Heavy Kev here. So, you know, I've been in this movement a long time. I started with this movement back when it was the Tea Party movement. I helped get that off the ground in Louisiana. Then I moved around a little bit, did a lot of work with other groups like the Oath Keepers, like the Pachyderms. I ended up in North Carolina getting involved here. You know, I speak at rallies, I do other stuff. But there's one thing I'm known for. It is being banned more than anybody else on the right from social media platforms. And everybody who knows me knows that I'm constantly on a different Facebook because one of them is intermittently banned for 30 days. I'm constantly having to start new Twitters and new YouTubes. Actually, I pretty much gave up on Twitter. And the reason I gave up on Twitter was because I lost an account where I had maybe 15,000 subscribers or followers. And I probably lost about 50,000 in total from about five years ago to present. And it's just so time consuming. But I always figured we have to fight. And the reason I'm getting banned or I've got banned so much is because I love to troll the left. And I post my videos, I post my comments on SJW sites, on, on their threads. I'll go out and find, you know, an LGBTQ group and post something like trans is a mental disorder. And then state the facts about how, you know, taking medication and having invasive procedures is classified as an illness. Stuff like that. Or I'll go out to a Black Lives Matter page and, and post stats on crime and police shootings that debunk their lies. But, you know, I do it to troll them. Anyway, that's why it hurts me so much when I see people who aren't out there trolling the left, who haven't done anything wrong, losing their verifications or becoming suspended completely from Twitter. We know that Jack Dorsey hates Trump and he hates people on the right. He's outright said it. We know that Susan Wachowski, whatever her name is over at YouTube, is out there trying to censor people on the right. They admit it. And we need to talk about the cause of this. You see... The left always claimed that they were against corporations, but what the left pushes nowadays, it is, you know, back in the day it would have been called fascism, but what it really is, is Fabian socialism. That's the idea that an elite group of people, the technocracy, will control all dialogue, all social interactions, they'll control pretty much everything we do, all aspects of human life, you know, using the modern technology, using uh, people who they consider to be the elites academically, and they'll control us all with socialism. That's why it's called Fabian Socialism. And it's very effective. They, they've talked about this for a long time. Back in the 1970s, Henry Kissinger, a bunch of other people met at what was called the Club of Rome, and they discussed how they wanted a system that was very much akin to China's communism. They wanted heavy-handed government with a few select corporations running everything, and the people completely dependent on the state and those corporations. And that's what's really disturbing about it is when we read books like 1984 by Orwell, these people warned us about it. They said, Orwell said, this is what's going to happen. These are the goals that the elites have for us. And the people who claim to be fighting the corporations, they're going along with their plans, whether it's unwittingly or, or wittingly and subversively. They are going out and pushing this agenda to the max. And so they're not going to speak up when somebody gets banned from Twitter. So we have to. And like I said, I've always gone out and kept going. No matter what they do to me in these social media platforms, if I have to create 20 emails, I'll do it. If I have to go out and change my photos every time, I'll do it. Because it comes down to us having the will to fight. As long as we have the will to fight and we put ourselves out there, and we speak up when they do this, they will lose because we become that counterculture. We can become that voice of opposition. And when people start looking into the censorship and they see they're trying to be programmed, they will wake up. But the second we stop and lay down, and that's what scares me, the second we do that, then they will walk all over us. And all you have to do is look at other socialist states that have followed this, this agenda, places like China, and now Sweden and parts of Europe that are censoring people's speech and arresting people for speech, arresting people who speak out against, you know, the masses who are invading Europe right now against the crime that's popping up all over Europe. People who speak up about that, they're not only being banned from social media in Europe, they're actually being arrested. So we have to stop this. We have to defend free speech and champion free speech for other countries too. See, bearing... His ideas were not that extreme. Maybe he opposed gay marriage. Maybe 
he spoke out, you know, against it, uh, countless people migrating into uh, Australia without any kind of, you know, verification or vetting. But nothing he said was outside the majority opinion. But these people who control the media companies, who control the social media, they want you to believe that a minority opinion is the majority. And that's taboo to speak of anything outside of that. Or even criminal, at that matter. So what can you do? Well, we have to start writing these people. But we also, and I hate to say this because, you know, I'm for limited government. I don't want the government to, to get involved in these companies. But just like the telecom companies, the government gave licenses to these groups. They made laws through lobbying to protect these big companies from competition. And so when a company like Gab comes out that offers an alternative to Twitter, they just can't be as good as Twitter. And they're not going to be as mainstream. Now, we can attempt to make them mainstream slowly. That's definitely an option. We should do that. Minds.com is another great company. But until then, we have to keep fighting these battles. We can't just retreat to these smaller companies. Because when we do, we are becoming ostracized from society. And when that ostracized, when that we become ostracized, the people on these me mega large platforms like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, when we leave those, those platforms, you still have young kids who are very impressionable and they become encased in a bubble on those platforms where they're not getting anything from the right. They're not hearing any opposing points of view. And so that's our responsibility. So you know what? I think people should start channels. Whenever somebody like Baring gets banned, we should start channels and Twitter accounts just as a tribute to them that tweet out the stuff they're saying outside of the platform on that platform so we can just echo them on that platform even if they're not there but we have to fight back guys and i just wanted to say that it's important and you know it's what's trending right now we need to be out there talking about it, even when it's not trending anymore because this is something that's close to my heart like i said i just started this new youtube channel and i named it black lives matter just to be a troll so we'll see how long before the you know thought police come after me but you know until then keep red pilling them